Ross, the guy that beat Charles Williams, or against Reggie Harding, and word feels a win tonight. He's definitely going to get that chance. And another little bit of innovation here tonight at the Roxy uh, is something that I'm sure comes on the heels of the Whitaker Chavez debacle back down in San Antonio, and that is that the audience here, and you at home, as a matter of fact, are going to get to know in most of these fights exactly how the judges are scoring the fight. And the way they're going to do that is when the 10-second warning buzzer sounds, they will hold up a card. It'll either be blue for blue corner or red, or in this case, orange, for the red corner. And that way, everybody, including the fighters, are going to know exactly where this fight stands. I think this is fascinating. This has not been done maybe only one other time in boxing history. And you see the judges there. They'll be getting their scorecards, getting them ready. You're going to know. I think it's going to be fascinating to see two things. For us to know who's winning, us and the people at home, the crowd, and secondly, what impact will it have, if any, on the judges? So not only, not only can you second guess with us tonight, you can second guess with the real <laughs> I judges I like that. Second well. guess, second guess somebody else for a change. Well, we talked about the main event. Let's talk about the fight that, in all honesty, I think is going to be the fight of the night. This is in a lightweight division between two guys who you've seen a lot here on Top Rank Boxing, a couple of guys who are really hungry, Frank Pena and Freddie Liberatore. Both these guys can bring it. Freddie Liberatore is a warrior, plain and simple, but he's trying to be a clever warrior. His aggressiveness and courage and some power got him most of his 16 wins, 10 by stoppage like that one. This likable 26-year-old is an aggressive boxer who can put you into oblivion, as he did Michael Green. But when that fails, he runs into trouble, as he did here against Leon Bostic in a draw. He now wants to work on becoming a more complete boxer. And he may need that if he's to win tonight. His opponent, former amateur champ Frank Pena, can box or slug. But knockout wins like this one get him into the latter more than the former. This slugfest with Ben Lopez produced a bad cut and a draw. And then, after a loss to Mark Smith, he came back with a big win over Carlos Ortiz. And he vows to mix boxing and slugging prudently. And he hopes to keep on winning. And here's a look at Frank Pena tonight as he comes in here off that TKO win over Carlos Ortiz. Good win for him back in June. And the man in the other corner, I'll tell you what, this is not going to be an easy task. Not going to be an easy task for either man. I really look for this to be a real battle. He also had a TKO over a tough guy, Ricardo Cepeda, the last time. Now let's talk about the keys to victory, the AutoZone keys to victory. Great style matchup. For Pena, he's got to keep focused. He has these lapses in fights, and it really hurts him. Don't brawl. Use your boxing skills. Be a boxer puncher. For Freddy Liberatore, inside is better. Got to get in there where he can't get it on the outside by those long shots by Pena. Go over the top. What I mean by that, Barry, is the overhand right is a punch that Pena has been susceptible to. Talk about the Massachusetts rules. Haven't been here in a while. No three knockdown rule. There is a standing eight. Three judges will score the fight. Uh, winner gets ten, loser nine or less. Referee can stop the bout. Fighter can be saved by the bell in any round in uh, this state. And that is an interesting change. So let's get yeah. to it. Here to tell you is Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the famous Roxy Ballroom here at the Tremont House in Boston, Massachusetts. Where tonight, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your bud, present professional boxing on ESPN for your entertainment. All the bouts you see tonight are sanctioned by the Massachusetts State Boxing Commission. Let's get things started with a 10-round bout. This is in the lightweight division. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action is referee Nick Prevetti. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the light blue trunks with black trim, weighing in at 134 pounds. He's from Denver, Colorado, with a professional record of 15 victories against only one defeat with two draws, eight KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank. El Pantera Peña. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the burgundy trunks with white trim, weighing an even 130 pounds. From Brooklyn, New York, his professional record, 16 victories against three defeats with one draw, 10 big KOs. Introducing Freddy Pitbull Liberatore. Fellas, just come back to me. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands. Wish you luck. So there once more is a look at Frank Pena. Pena had a very serious cut about three fights ago, and by his own admission, he said that 
just the thought of that possibility occurring again. You can still see a little mark on the bridge of the nose there. It was a nasty cut in a fight in Los Angeles this past January. But now he says it's behind him. He doesn't concern himself with it. But there was a time that he did. Freddy Libertor, no secret about his style. He's not going to be hard to find. Yeah, he is uh, comes at you, but he like he wants to do it now in a little bit more intelligent manner with a little more defense. And uh, that's the question: Can he do that without being hit? It's been a problem for him in the past. Well, Frank Pena said another interesting thing to us this morning when we chatted, and that is that. He was starting to whack guys out and whack guys out fairly easily. And he said in his own mind, all of a sudden, he had himself as a guy who can get you out of there with one punch. And he said that's not really his style. So he's kind of gone back to what brung him, if you will. He is very much a boxer puncher. Got good power, but wants to box. This is Levertor's style. And he can muscle you around. He's strong. There's the overhand right by Levertor. Frank Pena is going to have to throw and, and land good counter punches like that. And you know, Barry, he may be letting Libertor do some things here in this first round to see just how powerful he is and how much can I block, what can I do. There's a clash of heads, which of course can create a cut. The Pena jab uh, is going to be very important tonight. So far, Freddie's done a good job of avoiding it or blocking it, and he'll need to do that if he's going to win this bout. That cut that Pena suffered against Ben Lopez back in January really has had an effect on his career. I've been around this court for quite a while as you have, and that's as bad a cut as I have ever seen. It really was awful, and uh, didn't heal up too well. And then he lost his next fight out against Mark Smith on a decision. And, and the truth is, he should have lost the fight to Ben Lopez. Yeah, it ended up being a draw, but you could make a strong case for Ben Lopez winning that one. Well, this first round's been what Freddie Libertor wanted it to be. Not getting hit too much and getting a lot of pressure on Pena. Remember, we're going to be able to see what the officials are scoring, what the judges are scoring. This is really a kind of a precedent-setting historic occasion. I think it's a terrific idea. I thought it was interesting. We talked to fighters. The fighters don't think it's such a great idea. No. <laughs> Good right by Pena. I would think they would. I'd want to know. And interestingly enough, this is one of those rounds that could go either way. It's going to be very interesting here. Yeah, I would give it certainly to Libertor. So would I. But now it's going to be interesting to see what the judges say. The countering by Pena important. Lazy jab, there's the counter shot by Pena. Important for Frank to do that. All right, now you warmed up, let's go to work. Thank you. You're the man. can't do that. Now the judges will do their thing at the 10 second warning button. And they have all scored, as you see, for Freddie Libertor. Hey, how about that? Five of us agree. <laughs> This is a historic game. <laughs> yes. I didn't know just how historic this was going to be. So round two. You know, Freddie Liebertor threw 29 jabs in round one, which is good for him and a good sign for him because he needs to work off the jab and uh, work in, uh, get inside using that punch and that courtesy of punch profile. And those are the kind of statistics from them that really help us analyze this fight because you need to know that Libertor is doing those things. It's a nice right hand from Libertor, and here's the way the judges scored it, as you can see, and uh, your humble and obedient servants here concur. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see if the numbers substantiate that. Certainly they do. 
interesting, yeah. isn't it? It really, it really is yeah. intriguing. Well, you know, over at the Olympics, they had the scoring that the crowd could see, and ultimately the televised audience could see, and it was intriguing. There's another clash of heads there. Right hand by Pena, but you saw him throw it off his, the heel of his right foot. Libertor has gone to the body. Well, there's that right hand by Libertor. You can get that punch in against Frank Pena. What Libertor is doing, though, and you alluded to this, is he's coming in behind that jab. Even if it's not a strong jab, and you've talked about this a lot, if you just show the jab, he gets another right hand. That was a good one. And Pena holds on. Now, that was the old Freddie Libertor right there. Did not come with the jab, just came with the right hand lead and was off balance. And he did it because he landed that one before that. Yeah, and, and he and took one right there. This is exactly the way Freddie Libertar wanted this fight to go. That doesn't suggest he can't change at any moment, like from a right hand like that. Yes, very good one. Caught Libertar on the way in. And you know what? Because Freddie Libertar is now, you, you hit it, Barry. He's getting right hand happy as he comes in, instead of jabbing his way in. That's a very good point you made. There's a right hand. And that was a right hand lead that got there, but he didn't lunge with it. And a left hand from Pena. Well, from the outside, when you give Freddie Levator movement uh, from side to side and you punch with power, you can hit him. But this is a round that Levator, for most the most part, did good work in. Another clash of heads. And that's the one thing you really have to be very aware of in this fight. You hate to see a fight be decided by that. Coming to the end of round number two, and it's been an up-tempo fight, as we expected it might be. Back to the Roxy after this. What do you get with an IBM PS1? When you buy it from IBM PC Direct, you get a 486SX computer, a keyboard, monitor, modem, preloaded software, this mouse, and software featuring Mickey Mouse. Because this PS1 comes with a Disney software collection. 11 pre-installed programs for the whole family, all for $14.99. Now that's a pretty small price for such a big deal. Call now to order and we'll also send you this limited edition Disney video collection worth $100 as a gift. Call 1-800-4PC-POWER now. That's my dad. And that's mom. Dad's got an idea. A way to get rid of all the grody garbage that's polluting the world. He's invented a big rocket ship to shoot all the garbage into outer space. Mom's not sure. But dad says his invention will save the world. There's an easier way to save the world. Recycle. For your free recycling action guide, write Recycle. Environmental Defense Fund, 257 Park Avenue South, New York, New York. Frank Pena getting hit with this overhand right by Libertor. Good punch for him, but counters with this left hook. Well, actually, he went after him and landed that lunging left hook in the last round. Indication of what both men are doing well. It's really interesting, isn't it, that both these guys are warriors. And both, it seems, have been in a lot of very similar types of fights. Yes. Both have probably taken more punches in their young career than they would have liked to. Libertor at 60, 20, 66. That's a little old. Yeah, around a while. 26. <laughs> Pena 22. They're trading right hands. You know, that's really not good for Libertor to do, just throwing the lead, because I will tell you, Frank Pena's straight right hand is more powerful than Libertor's overhand right. Let's take a look at the numbers in the second round. And Libertor again with an edge. It was interesting that one of the three judges gave that second round to Frank Pena. And I gave it to Libertor. Yeah, as the two other judges. Freddie Libertor's got to start thinking about that jab again a little more, though. Yeah. There he came in behind it. When he jabs his way in, he's infinitely more uh, effective. Since he had a draw with Leon Bostic that we showed here on ESPN, uh, Freddie has been working very hard to try and become a more complete boxer. Double left hand from Libertor. He's throwing that punch real wide, though, tonight. Not getting as much leverage as you might on. Uh, should also point out that Frank Pena now has Eddie Mustafa Muhammad in his corner, a guy of, whose praises we've sung, and I, I feel with good reason. 
they're working very hard with Frank, to, and we said it yes uh, earlier, to, uh, to keep him focused throughout a fight. He has rounds where he'll look good, and then rounds where he loses focus, and uh, you can't afford that. Nice combination from Pena, but he took a counter right from Levitor. And he's throwing right uppercuts from far out. He shouldn't be doing that. This is where Levitor wants to fight, and he is connecting. And Pena gets out of there. Levitor just chases him. And Frank Pena with his hands very low. There's an excellent uppercut by Pena, but every time he throws that punch and misses, he gets whacked with a counter shot. He also is not on balance when he throws that punch. Well, you said this was going to be a good one, and uh, you are correct, sir. It is. Coming to the end of the third round, it's been another good round for Freddie Libertor. And it's not for a want of trying by Frank Pena. See that at long range, when he uses the jab, Pena can get it done. So we come to the end of the third round, and it ends with a good right hand from Pena. in the world would you go if there were no Las Vegas? For this, you'd have to go to Rome. For superstar entertainment, New York. World-class dining, halfway around the world. And you couldn't go anywhere for this. Only in Las Vegas. This year during the World Series, Budweiser will bring you the game within the game. The Budweiser World Series Classic. To play, go to your favorite store, look for this sign, and pick up an official game card. Then catch the Budweiser Classic play during each game of the World Series. Each one's worth $100,000. Who knows? You could make the greatest play of the series. Nice catch. Here's where Pena got the right-handed over the lazy jab of Libertor. Slap with it a little bit, though. Yeah. Two judges gave that round to Libertor. One judge had it even. The left hand from Pena, but again, he's off balance with that punch. No, in the back now, both of you. I know you all. Keep it out. There is a pretty Libertor ahead by 16 punches thus far in this bout. And I've given Libertor all three rounds on my card. As have I. Even though a couple of them were fairly close. Right hand, good right hand by right Pena counter over the lazy jab. When, when Libertor comes in, he needs to throw two jabs at a time, not just one. There was a right hand from Libertor. Now, now we're into Libertor and Pena doing all the things their, their corners really don't want them to do, but the right. fans do want them to do that. Okay, They're loading up with punches, which neither of their corners want them to do. But sometimes they're landing, and it's making for an exciting match. Well, both these guys have a history of exciting matches, and both landed there. Libertor actually missed a real opportunity with there, the right hand. There is no excuse for Freddie Libertor to wing that overhand right like that without throwing a jab in front of it or working to the body first. And that's what will get you hit with a counter right, and that's what makes you look better. And he has forgotten about that jab since about totally. the middle of the first round, actually. Only 12 jabs this round by Freddie Libertor, we're told by Bob Canobio and Punch Profile. what we're saying. And also, Libertor has not gone to the body much in the last round, if he hasn't. The thing about this fight is, it feels like Libertor is imposing his will a little bit more on Pena, not getting nailed as much with the clean counter shots as he might be. I, and I think the reason for that, and it's probably being caused by Libertor, is that he's got Pena throwing punches off balance. Pena's throwing a lot of punches off his heels. And it's not that Frank's not landing his share, because he is. Right. Coming to the end of the 
the fourth round. A lot of close rounds here, but they're not close enough to give to Pena, in my opinion. For me, looking good isn't about vanity. The job requirement. Beautiful. Even just a couple of flakes. It's a bad move. That's why I use Head & Shoulders Dry Scalp Shampoo. Other shampoos can strip moisture away. Head & Shoulders helps protect your scalp's natural moisture and helps prevent flakes before they start. Put it to the test and see for yourself. Head & Shoulders Dry Scalp Shampoo and 2-in-1. Because beautiful hair can't have flakes. Catch the Shooting Stars, Saturday, October 30th on Pay-Per-View. Undefeated Michael Carvajal puts his IBF and WBC Light Flyweight Championship on the line against Domingo Sosa. Oscar De La Hoya continues his climb in the junior lightweight division. Plus, veteran Lupe Aquino squares off against Verno Phillips for the super welterweight crown. See it live on Pay-Per-View. Call your local cable operator. This is what Barry promised you. This is what you're getting. A couple of guys whacking each other with some big shots. Those punches are as wide and as looping and as loaded up as you can get. And that's exactly what they don't want to see from these two fighters, but it's exciting. And Libertors, though, were less off balance than Pena. Yeah. How's that for backhand? There you go. He did have a little more leverage on it. You're right. But we talked about the jabs that Libertor was or wasn't throwing, and I think some of the numbers that we just got would indicate that. He threw 22 in the last round and landed only three, so... He, even using it as a range finder, he could have thrown more of those, probably. Well, Liebertor not trying to get Pena to be the aggressor. Slapping left hand by Liebertor. These are the score, the official judges in this fight, and this is how they have seen it by rounds, mind you, not by score. Only one judge has given one round to Pena. So clearly, uh, Liebertor, uh, as we feel, pretty much controlling things here. Though in an entertaining fight, and one in which uh, Frank Pena's had more than his moments. See, Pena's leaning down, working on the inside, doing the things that really don't suit his style, Barry, and it's, it, Pena's making this a tougher fight for himself with all that leaning down and all the rest of it. But Libertor has a cut over his left eye, and that could be a problem as this fight goes on. And in this state, even if it came in a, an unintentional clash of heads, there is literally no rule that deals with that. So it's just if you get cut from an unintentional butt, you can lose. Big hook by Leeds A little swelling under the right eye of Pena, too. Hard to tell how bad that cut is of a Freddie Leeds eye. Try to watch it between rounds if we can for Freddy, you. Freddie's walking into some counter shots from Frank. And, Libertar's trainer, Charlie Rivera, has worked very hard with him to try and make him a little bit more disciplined. Cut is not in a good spot. It's right on the eyelid. See, look when he jabs his way in, how effective Libertar is. And Frank Pena has got to stop leaning in and fighting on the inside with him. Oh, my. Good left hand. And that time, Pena really was on balance. But I'm going to tell you something. This is a bad sign from Frank Pena. Those hooks are not hurting Libertar real badly. And, uh... He's going to take some to throw those hooks. You just you don't throw an uppercut like that on your heels. And you don't need to do a lot to make Freddie Libertor brave. And he will come at you. Yes. Oh, this is a very entertaining matchup. We've had uh, one of our best by far in the last several months. Triple left hand, two of them got there. Coming to the end of round five. Better round for Frank Pena. I believe he won this round. We'll be back. A grapefruit drink that's actually sweet? Yep. Ocean Spray Ruby Red Grapefruit Juice Drink. It's got a sweet taste that's really different. Say this is grapefruit juice. This is Ruby Red. Grapefruit juice? Ruby Red. Yeah, it's got a surprisingly sweet taste your whole family will love. It's sweet. Ocean Spray Ruby Red Grapefruit Juice Drink. The surprisingly sweet taste of Ruby Red. Now in 64-ounce family size. There's a look into the corner of Freddie Liebertor. It's still hard to tell. Let's go now. Let's go. A little crowded in there. And that, that cut is in a place where it could cause a problem. There's definitely some work to do in that corner. He's smart, man. Right? Meanwhile, the voice you're hearing is that 
Uh, good right hand by Charlie, by uh, Frank Pena. It's Charlie Rivera's voice is the man you heard in there. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, meanwhile, was saying that he feels Freddie Libertor is done and that Pena should go get it. Well, one thing that Libertor is doing is standing. Oh, there's Libertor throwing an uh, uppercut from way back. Now Libertor is standing straighter up and Pena is staying straight up himself, so he's able to pick Libertor off instead of bending down so much. Well, Eddie Muhammad wanted Frank Pena two rounds ago, between rounds. He said, stay in the middle of the ring, keep him in the middle of the ring. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is now with us. And Eddie, what you said to your man between rounds is that Freddie Libertor, for all intent, is dead. Do you believe that? Yes, I believe that. He's walking into lead right hand, like the beginning of the uh, last round. He's just walking into punches now. Freddie's a gang competitor, just like he's walking in right there. He's a gang competitor, and he's going to be there, I guess, for the duration. But, you know, Frank he's got uh, he's a school well and he knows what to do you want frank to stay in the center of the ring i heard you say that a couple of rounds ago is that right exactly because uh frank's fight is the enemy of the ring and he gets to punch off much better you, if frank is doing one bad thing though eddie he's leaning over and bending down to the right instead of staying straight up where he's not going to get hit is that something you guys have talked about well if frank steps over he uh, freddie walks right to the right hand and then you'll see in a minute that frank's going to step over and he walks right to the right hand stay wrist like that he walks right to the right hand thanks eddie there you go Good. okay i'm not ready Thanks for being with us, Eddie. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, though, and we've talked about it many times, one of the fine young trainers, a guy who has been able to be the teacher as well as the fighter. Former light heavyweight champion. And boy, could he punch, huh? Also fought as a cruiserweight. Well, he is right about one thing, that's for sure. Frank Payne is able to land those right hands and Libertor getting hit as he walks in. Yeah, Payne really starting to get on track now, and the tenor of this fight is changing. And Libertor, you notice him missing with those shots, should be going to the body. And now Frank Pena is boxing much better, landing counter shots, using all of this ring. The, probably the kind of fight I would think they would have wanted from Pena before. For some of it, it had to do with Libertor being uh, a little fresher and giving more pressure. Yeah, getting inside is not as easy a task for Freddy Libertor as it was. There's the left hand. Frank Pena looks like he's getting a little tired right now, too. So both men are feeling good. good body work by Pena, though. This is going to come down, I believe, to a fight of wills. Also, one thing I was maybe a little derelict to mention, Freddie Libertor is a very quick starter and has been known to have trouble in the middle and later rounds. But we've got two warriors, and that's what makes for a great fight. We'll be back with more. Who provides the fastest score updates? The Daily News, the Post, or the Times with once-a-day updates? No! WFAN with updates only every 20 minutes? No! The winner is Sports Phone! Sports Phone, 976-1313. NFL and college football updates every two minutes. The fastest football updates, just 36 cents. CNN is just constantly bringing people on to talk. Some days we're entertaining and some days informative and some days both. We do make a special effort to try to key off the national news of the day, the biggest controversy of the day. In an era when people have so little time to focus, any kind of interview program really rounds out the debate. And the more talk shows you have, the more detail you can add to the picture. Frank Pena landing the right hand after the jab. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad was commenting on that. There they trade left hooks on the inside. And uh, that time, he's getting a little more leverage in his. Now, there in that sequence, Freddie Liebertor jabbed his way in and threw a combination. Look what happened for him. All good things. Here's the numbers in the sixth round. And you can see Pena really starting to turn this fight. Libertor starting off this round, however, very strongly. The, it, it, this fight, 
is a fight of strategy, even though we have warriors. For Le Fred Liberatore, he has now put in mothballs his jab and his body attack. Those are the most important things for him. Frank Pena has begun boxing the way he should, standing straight up instead of bending down. That's why he's doing better. Although it's interesting, if you just take a look across the ring, Al, into Pena's corner, they want him to come ahead. They're motioning to come in, to come in. Big right. Well, there is the... Uh, there's the scoring so far. That's by round. By so round. Far in the fight. So th that does not necessarily indicate exactly how this fight is going. Does it? Well, it does because each judge has it. That's their scoring for each judge. And uh, but you would think every round has to be a one-point round. Right. So you would think that those are the points that they're ahead. I have Libertor two points ahead, or two rounds ahead, if you will. Referee Nick Pavetti doing a nice job here. Not necessarily interfering with the fight, yet keeping it going. Double left hand, left to the body and the left to the head. And there is a little bit of blood from that, the cut on the bridge of the nose of Frank Pena. It's not bad right now. Good job by the, the corner man of Libertar for the cut over the eye as well. And Libertor now going back to the body, which served him well early in this fight. Gonna go to the corner of Freddy Libertor. Who had a much better round that last round? Uh, to roll with the punches, you see how nice? Okay. Uh, when you hook down, you gotta hook up. When you hook up, you hook down, okay? Then a short right hand. I don't want wavy right, right hand. Yeah. Okay. So they come right back. So he's trying to angle you with his right hand. What a reminder, college football right here on ESPN Wisconsin, undefeated so far, playing at Purdue. They're a favorite despite the fact that they are on the road, and then number 15, Virginia, at number one, Florida State. I'll tell you, if there's a better college football team in this land, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen anybody come close to what Florida State can do. Then at 7.30, it'll be Notre Dame at BYU, and then, of course, one week from now, Notre Dame plays Florida State. So kind of a preview of that big game. Should be a lot of points in the Notre Dame-BYU game. There is Pena coming with the overhand right. He has landed that punch repeatedly, but in the seventh round, Freddy Libertor had his moments and then some. Take a look at the numbers through seven, very close. Libertor has been more active in his land than only 17 more punches. And because Libertor has been so much more active, uh, you have to feel like uh, he may be getting a little bit more of a nod from the judges. You know, of course, you think it's mostly what landed, but, you know, that's, that's kind of subjective, too. I mean, they may not think as many punches have landed. Of course, they're not counting specifically as are the punch profile guys. Now here are the judges' card. One judge has it even. This fight is still there to be had for Frank Pena. And two, two judges uh, have it 5-3 uh, in round, which means basically two points. I believe I believe we're going ahead by three points in this fight. The last round, a pivotal round in this bout. So it's interesting as we head into the uh, eighth round here, we're in, we're into it. 
on two of the judges' scorecards, Frank Pena has got to win all three of these rounds in order to win this bout, or score a knockdown, which would create a two-point round. Now, my question is, are the corners paying attention to this? Do they have anybody writing it down? I don't know. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking about it. I would. I, I have forgotten to look at it. And I think, you know, you just get so trained as to what you do between rounds. It's, it's the case for us, and I'm sure that that's the case in the corners, too. Well, we're busy, but I'll tell you what. If I was running a corner and I knew this was going to happen, I would have one of my guys absolutely with his eyes on all the judges. I'd have him writing it down, and him, during the round, he could tell me what it is, and then I would have an idea so I'd know where my fighter was at in the fight. Otherwise, what's the point? Why, you know, no advantage to you. These are two guys, you know, whose nickname really is apt. I'll tell you that, the Panther and the Pit Bull, and that's really what these guys are all about. Really? Counter left hand from Pena, and the right hand of Libertor got there also. Here's a very close round right here in a round that Frank Pena needs. As we come to the end of round number eight, two rounds to go in a fight that is still up for grabs. Good fight. David Robinson. Take the time. Take it all. Take a message. Take the time. Now. Barry Tompkins with Al Bernstein. We welcome you back to the Roxy here in Boston, Massachusetts. We talked about the fact this is a place with a lot of history. After fashion, we're kind of making a little bit of history tonight here, too, Al. We really are with this new scoring thing, and you'll see the judges are now going to show you who they thought won the last round. Remember, the red corner is Pena, and the blue is uh, Libertor. Two for Libertor, one for Pena, and uh, we'll see how that factors in now. I think that's the judge that had it even before, so yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Now Libertor has, a, I think, a three-point edge, a three-round edge on two of the judges' scorecards. We may be in a case now, and we'll check it when we check our, score, our numbers, where Frank Pena absolutely has to have a knockdown or a two-point round to even draw. Take a look at your card. Three points for Libertor, so you certainly see it that way. Libertor continuing to force the action. The jabs are just about the same. Libertor coming into this round had thrown 173 jabs and landed 41. Pena had thrown 175 and landed 49. As you look at the numbers in the last round, equally close. And you know, what Freddie Libertor has done here is start to impose his will in the last couple rounds. Remember, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad felt in about the fifth, sixth round that there was a, that there was a lot of fatigue on the part of Freddie Libertor, that he was dead in effect, that he had nothing left. Well, he's shown us he does. Just saw an old pal sitting in the yeah. audience here, Bud Collins. Yeah, sitting Anthony across the way. Yeah. The tennis maven. Oh, yeah, he is. My hero. <laughs> As you are mine. <laughs> Star studded at the Rocks. Uh, right? Anyone who's anyone is. Do you think Benny Goodman ever played this song? Probably did. Benny did. Years ago. Libertor keeping things on the inside where he's safe, where he can. Not get hit with those big bombs on the uh, over the top from Pena. You know what? Nick Cravetti's done a very nice job of refereeing this fight too. We come into a lot of these areas, and uh, I guess I'm getting known as the scourge of the commissions. Well, I can praise <laughs> Nick Cravetti's done a very nice job. Wild punches by Pena, missing most of them. Because I'm not thinking. <laughs> you just said that. I was busy uh, doing things. I, I know that. I can't I concentrate that. on everything you Red say. Red cards, now. blue cards, <laughs> hard. I guess I didn't hear that. <laughs> well, I was just actually punctuating what you were saying. Right. So, so referee is doing a pretty good job. I think we've pretty much covered yeah. that. We've established it. Hey, go, 
Meantime, this has been nonstop. I'll tell you, you talk about Benny Goodman playing this room. He, he wouldn't have been any more entertaining than these guys. No, they, they have put on a great show. In fact, he wouldn't swing any more than these guys. <laughs> Coming to the end of round nine, we'll be back. Catch the Shooting Stars, Saturday, October 30th on Pay-Per-View. Undefeated Michael Carbajal puts his IBF and WBC light flyweight championship on the line against Domingo Sosa. Oscar De La Hoya continues his climb in the junior lightweight division. Plus, veteran Lupe Aquino squares off against Verno Phillips for the super welterweight crown. See it live on Pay-Per-View. Call your local cable operator. place. It's the new Burger King everyday value menu with big flame world burgers for only 99 cents. I can't do it myself for 99 cents. Your favorite Burger King foods at new lower everyday prices. Like the Chris Sandwich Combo served hot and fresh for $1.99. Check your Burger King everyday value menu and be sure to try the delicious flame world Whopper Combo for $2.99. That's great news for my pocketbook. Value every day. Have it your way. You're going to want to come back every day. Here is Frank Pena. Strike one, strike two, strike three. Can you have four strikes? Yeah, in boxing you can. And he got nailed by a punch by Freddie Liberatore there. Final round. And Liberatore fighting like a guy who has no idea that he's ahead in this fight. Numbers very, very close. Close in the numbers, but we know what the official scoring is, and they should know it. Freddie Liebertor is ahead in this fight. Now, here, here's the big question. I got asked this by newspaper guys all week, on radio shows. Will it affect the boxing? When they know what the score is, will they run? Well, guess what? If Freddie Liebertor and his guys knew the score here, which they should, he should be running, shouldn't he? He should be running around the sling like a scalded dog, but he's not, because he's a fighter. Well, that's it. Because <laughs> maybe they don't know You answered your won. own question. <laughs> means I won't be contradicted, I guess. <laughs> Better that way. This is intriguing, though. There's no reference being made in the corners to this, so apparently you have to really be paying attention and be, be a statistician a little bit to keep track, which you're not going to do if you're the actual main corner man, but somebody else could be doing it for you. You make a good point, though, and if the fighters do start to notice that, it could make for some less interesting fights. Possibly. Well, right now, if I was Freddie Liebertor, I'm not going to be wading in like this. Now, I don't have to run, but I might be a little careful. But he's fighting this like the old days of boxing, if you will, which is, I don't know if I won or lost. The old days were last week. Yeah, really. <laughs> I remember the good old days uh, of last week. Him. No, <laughs> this fight makes this the good old days this week. Well, this fight really has been as advertised. Very much. And that's so. always nice. And the only the reason why I think ultimately Freddie Liebertor has won this bout is that he's been able to do what he wanted a little bit more than Pena. He's been able to work the body a little more, land the overhand right, get his jab in. Frank Pena has not been able to counter as much as he would like. And there's the right hand. That's what Pena wanted to do more of tonight. Good shot, too. That's what he wants to do. He's probably winning this last round, Pena, but we're pretty sure it's not going to be enough if the, as we've been reading the score. There will be no knockout in this fight. I'm sure won that last round, but it was not enough. And it is interesting, because just watching the corner of Frank Pena, I mean, they are reacting as though they won the fight, and it's right out there for everybody to see. I, I, unless we're missing something, and, uh, you know, our abacus is wrong, <laughs> I, I don't think he did, because the way we were keeping tabs on it, two of the judges, it would have been impossible at a certain point for Pena to win enough rounds to win the fight. Yes. One, the one judge that had it close, he might have uh, given Pena the edge, I think. 
Well, it is hockey season, believe it or not. Yes, sir, folks, the Detroit Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs will see it up on Friday, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific, right here on ESPN, the NHL. We're being, we're being told now, by the way, from uh, the corner of Freddie Libertor, that he hurt his right hand badly in the fourth round. And you can see the pain in his, his face as they take that glove off. And you know what? He didn't throw that many right hands. Uh, That's a good point. In the Alexis, I'll be home, David. I love you. Happy birthday, Alexis. Here are the total numbers. Very close fight. Pretty close, but uh, an edge, a 20-punch edge for Libertor. I had the one-point fight for Libertor, so I ended up making it about as close as those numbers were. But I think a couple of the judges had at least one or two points, at least two points for, uh, for Libertor. And one of the judges had it close all the way through. He may end up scoring it here for Pena or a draw, but no question, two of the judges had it for Libertor. Now, wouldn't this be the ultimate irony if all of a sudden Frank Pena wins? Well, yeah. You know? <laughs> Boy, then we really have something to... <laughs> It's the first time I've ever been fooled when I've seen the score. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they're they're making sure that everything is correct. So we are just about set to find out officially, and let's do that with Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Jerry Leone scores about 96, 96, he has it even. Peter Modica scores the bout, 98, 93. And Judge Conley scores the bout, 97, 95, for the winner by majority decision, the Pitbull, Freddy Interesting fight. It really was as advertised, and uh, interesting to see the judges' scores as it goes along. Even more interesting to see how the corners reacted to it. We'll be back. Showtime. Jordan drives again. Everyone's seen Michael Jordan.